Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video on modern JavaScript for Ellipse series. In today's video guys, I'll show you how you can use asynchronous JavaScript and promises in your standard JavaScript code and how you can enhance that code and, and use the modern ways of developing it. Okay, so guys, as you know, like JavaScript is, is single threaded, which means that only one function can run at a time. If you have been doing JavaScript asynchronous development for a few years, then you may have come across one or more libraries that implemented some kind of promise patterns. A promise is basically a promise to return something later. So when you use a promise, that means like it will return something, return a result uh, at a later time. Either the thing you wanted is returned or maybe it could be an error as well. So the modern JavaScript introduced promises natively to use JavaScript in the form of a promise object. The most important advantage is how easy it is to chain a synchronous function together. Let's understand it by an example. So we'll be creating a asynchronous function first. So for that, we'll go to play code. Okay get started javascript template okay now let's create a function first okay now we'll create we will be creating this function asynchronously so we'll be using promises here so this function should return a promise either it could be uh, the result or the error so the return type of this function will be a promise okay and then let's add a set timeout function here as well so promise can return a resolve or reject if it is an error it will uh, it will return reject and if it is success then it will return resolve okay so in this function we'll be just using set timeout and let's print message here okay and then we will call resolve to call the fun functions one after each other okay and let's add a timer for one second i believe would be enough here so i will add 1000 milliseconds okay so this is a function which is x which is accepting a promise Okay, now uh, we will call this function like this. So you can call it like do something. And let's say first call. Okay, so this is a way of calling this function. Okay, but let's suppose like what if you have to call it asynchronously again and again in a continuous manner, then in that case, what you can do is you can use a then and then call the function again okay let's name it second call so now you can see the output it says first call then second call okay now let's suppose if you would like to add another function in the same chain so you can use the then keyword again here let me just copy it quickly. Okay, so that will be your third call. So if you will see the output now, this first call, then one second pause, second call, then a second pause, and third call. Okay. Third call. Okay. So that's how you can chain these functions to execute one after each other. The cool thing here is how the do something function is called. 
we can now use the then method to specify what gets called only after the first function completes. If you remember, we discussed arrow function in one of the previous videos. By combining promises with arrow functions, the code becomes even easier to read. Okay, so let's try to execute the same function, the same one using promises. So for that, what we will do in this set timeout, we'll remove this function and instead of that, we will just do a fat arrow here. Okay. And this do something here also we can remove function we'll add fat arrow like this and here also we can do the same so now the output will be seen like the first call then a second pause then second call then a second pause then th then the third call but here what we have done is we have used we have used the fat arrow functions with uh, with this asynchronous asynchronous functions to make it even more easier to read okay and to see what happens when calling the reject method we need to add some code in the set timeout handler that intentionally throws an error so for that, what we can do is in this set promise, here it is. So in this set timeout, what we can do is we can add a try here. Okay and catch this catch object will always return the error object and then we can use reject and then we pass the object okay so now you can see the functionality is going on as expected because we are not having any error but if you will throw an error manually so let's suppose like if we will throw an error here Okay. So if we will add an error here, so it that is not going to make any effect on your output because uh, we have to add that error, the catch object on the then as well. So eventually you can also add that uh, return type as an error with every then callout, but it is like it is mentioned as a best practice to use the catch after all these uh, chaining requests so we can do it like this error and we can pass error dot message from here so you can see the bad error here that was the intentionally error from the set timer thing and uh, make sure like you you should add the catch method uh, here in your code and also don't forget to add the catch in the then callouts as well you can call the failure function with each then call as well but coding uh, but calling the error function at the bottom of the chain using the catch ma method is the best practice since it will catch all the errors produced from a chain okay so that's why we have called this at the end of this uh, at the end of this chain and also like in the latest release it introduced a synchronous function in a different way of calling native promises and that also will be calling the promises but I would say the way will be a diff uh, little difference like instead of this promise uh, functionality we will be using a sync and await keywords the async call will be now using async and await keywords and as a result it will return the result or, or the rejected value as we were getting it here in promises as well. For example, 
let's try a sample code in this play code so let me just revert it back okay let me remove this error part and this as well okay just a second okay i think it is resolved now okay so now you can see the code is running uh, as expected but here instead of this then we'll be using a sync and await okay so for that what you can do is instead of this do something calling this to something again and again using then what we can do is we can simply create a sync function here do something many times okay and here we can use that await do something then let's say first call then we will use await again and again for the second and third call so this would be the second and this is going to be the third call okay and also here also you can use that try and catch block like if you'd like to catch any error from these chain of functions you can always use the try and catch block here as well okay to pass the error message and now from here what you can do is you can just simply call this do something many times okay you can see the result first call second call and third call so this is also another way of doing the same stuff many developers thinks this syntax is easier to read and understand because uh, it is displaying a chain kind of a process from top to bottom but it is really i mean it is just a different way of working with promises eventually on the on the back end or behind the curtain it is just you know the simple promises so it is up to you like which way you prefer okay so that's it for today guys if you need the complete code of this example so you can just go to my blog which is salesforcepole.com and get it from there and also if you like today's video a subscribe to the channel will be awesome i'll see you in the next one guys thanks for watching